This question comes to us from T, and T writes this, Dear we TV, when we become dogmatic and legalistic, do we actually limit God? Thanks for the help on this question, T. T, very good question. What we want to wrestle with, first and foremost, is this word dogmatic. It's actually an older word, and it communicates to have a lot of passion and drive and, and a zeal for a particular opinion on something. In other words, we can become very dogmatic when it comes to many things, such as politics and sports. But more specifically in your question here, maybe we can uh, supplement a, a synonym to this word dogmatic to have doctrine. So in other words, to rephrase your question, does having a focus and a passion for doctrine limit God? Now, it would limit God if the doctrine was actually based off of mankind. If it was the doctrines of man, you bet the doctrines of man would limit who God is, or at least attempt or try to. However, when it comes to Christian doctrine, Christian doctrine comes forth from the Word of God, and the Word of God, as we know, is actually the spoken Word of God Himself. So God speaks forth doctrine. So why would God speak forth doctrine about Himself and reality that would actually undercut or come against Him? It just doesn't make sense. Now, let's, let's look at a couple practical applications of this, if you, if you don't mind. If we look at the pastoral epistles of First and Second Timothy and Titus, the Apostle Paul speaks to them about doctrine, about sound doctrine. And what we find interesting in the pastoral epistles of First and Second Timothy and Titus is Paul does not warn young Timothy and Titus to watch out about preaching too much doctrine or being too solid. He actually does the exact opposite. He tells them to watch the sound doctrine, to embrace sound doctrine, to maintain sound doctrine in the churches as pastors, because that is the fundamental core of the church, which the church stands upon, the great confession of Christ. Now, why does Paul do this? Well, Paul does this because the early church in the first century was born into a context of heresy. I mean, heresy abounded from Romans to the very general epistles. We see heresy. Corinth was in a, just a wreck. We look at Galatia. They had legalism rampant everywhere. We think of 1 John. There was Gnostic heresy abounding up and down, left and right. It was everywhere. And Paul speaks in these epistles to the churches. He speaks sound doctrine into them to correct and rebuke and what? Establish them in the faith, this doctrinal faith of who we are in Christ. So now back to your question, does doctrine limit God? Well, like I said before, it would if it's the doctrines of man. But you know what? When it really comes down to it. The Lord's doctrine limits us. The Lord's doctrine comes against our old Adam. Our sinful natures, all of our sinful natures, wants to create our own doctrine that we could use to suit our own, suit our own fancy. However, the Lord's doctrine, his word, comes at us and it actually limits us. It puts us in our place. It actually kills the old Adam and it buries the old Adam in the grave and then it raises us up in the confession of Christ. So when it comes to doctrine, does it limit God? Well, if it's man-made doctrine, it sure attempts or tries to. But if it's God's doctrine from his word, it does the exact opposite. It limits us. It limits the old Adam. But it does that so that it might crucify and kill and bury this old Adam in our baptisms and then raise us up in freedom, freedom in Jesus Christ for eternity and everlasting life. So doctrine, my friend, is awesome. It is great. I hope this helps, and we'll catch you next time. Worldview Everlasting is solid, Christian, and free because it is viewer supported. Your monthly gift of five, 10, or $25 is the reason that we can continue to improve and expand these tools for online Christian outreach and discipleship. To make a one-time donation, sign up for the Lutheran Ninja Clan regular giving, or to find information about how to put Worldview Everlasting in your congregation's budget, click Donate Now. Jesus.